So good afternoon, Ali, and welcome to the CDE. Um, Ali Omani is the uh, UCC uh, Students' Union Education Officer, and we're delighted to have her here today to talk to us. Ali's going to talk to us about what's important from a student's perspective to aid learning in UCC. And this goes back, I suppose, a little bit uh, back to October 2021, right in the middle of COVID. And Stephen Arudin, who was the, um, the, the previous Education Officer in the Students' Union, worked with us. And we developed um, a nice graphic that explains some of the key things that were important to staff in UCC. So we're going to talk a little bit about those today and see if they're still relevant uh, for staff. So Ali, the first of those pillars really that we had was around clear organisation. So why is clear organisation important for students? I suppose in undertaking a degree there's so much to consider and having such fantastic digital education tools such as Canvas um, make that degree so much easier. Um, if their modules and their outlines are organised in a clear and effective manner, that also really aids the students. So having you know, um, succinct outlines in their course, having um, consistent um, course content across, let's say, for an art student, if all of their courses were very similar, laid oh, yeah. out. Yep. Um, I think also utilising the expertise that are provided by the lecturing staff is really important. They are the experts in their field, so having that um, data uploaded to Canvas, having it easily accessible to students is really, really important for their degree stream. Um, now, obviously, as we know, post-COVID UC is um, a primarily um, on-campus um, kind of environment, but yeah. I think also we have to understand that online, um, you know, either supplementary via recordings or kind of readings are really important to have there as well, just to aid the student in the best way we can going forward. Fantastic. So the stuff we learned in COVID, we should, we should actually learn from those lessons and actually keep them going forward. So Definitely. let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Definitely not. not. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ali. So listen, the next one that we had was talking about, now this is during COVID, of course, and we were talking about the importance of, of uh, interactivity. So where staff and students were online, interactivity yeah. was doubly important. How important do you think interactivity is t in today's learning in UCC? Yeah, obviously, as, as we say, there is that classroom experience, you know, the face-to-face in-person teaching and that interaction is always going to be there. Um, I think it's just important for um, us to keep in mind that also when we have those online sessions, whether that be through online seminars or um, maybe one-to-one -one tutoring sessions online and um, via Teams, that it's really important that we have that engagement through, let's say, um, breakout rooms, workshops, that yep. kind of thing to keep the student interactive so it's not the blank screen and no mic turned on. Yep. Um, I think polls are also a really effective way to engage with students. Fantastic. It's a really quick and easy way to engage with them. Yep. Um, so to keep that in mind also. And that's really good because we've just... Um, we just signed a contract actually to purchase a piece of UCC polling right. software. So in the past, people would have used their own um, licenses for polling. So we, just, we we learned from that. And we've now purchased a piece of, of polling software called Vivox, which hopefully by the time this video goes live, we'll have rolled out in UCC. So it's really great to hear Fantastic polls being mentioned. Fantastic timing. Yeah. yeah, so actually we're spending money on something we need. Definitely. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. So the next pillar that we're looking at, and I suppose this could, there's two pillars here really, this is about uh, recording lectures. So obviously again, during COVID, recording lectures are really important for students who couldn't, couldn't get to campus, couldn't be on campus. But we've seen a continuation of that. We now have a policy for recording live teaching to assist student study. So we're very clear about it. It's not lecture recording, it's about using videos to, to help students. Mm -hmm. How important do you think recording lectures and recording teaching content is for students today? Yeah, I think it's really important to note what you said, Tom, that it's it's an aid. It's not it's yeah. not a replacement. It can aid students in their studies. Um, I think having the lecture recording policy that I know my predecessor, as you say, Stephen Reardon, worked really closely with, is fantastic because the student voice was heard through that policy. Um, having the pilot as an opt out as well really allows for like kind of a seamless integration oh, yes. yeah. into the into the current kind of phase that we're in with that policy. Um, I think also it's important to note that because of the opt out policy, we can kind of use it as a trial by trial basis. Um, and learn from how it worked, how it worked in certain areas, you know, the bigger lecture spaces, the smaller, um, and also kind of showing that using it as an aid won't affect attendance. You know, it can yep, be utilised alongside the lecture basis, you know, even for, you know, revision, study, in the lead up to exams, it might be nice to refresh. Yep. Um, and just having that data to kind of compare has it aided students in the way we want and kind of going from there. Very good. And actually, I suppose the, the opt-out policy or the opt-out pilot really is about 
the automation of lecture recording. That's, yeah. that's something we're trying to uh, trying to work on at the moment, and it's quite tricky in UC because of data, but it is, it, it's throwing up lots of interesting uh, learnings yeah. for us on it. Can I ask you a question about longer recordings? That was something that came up during COVID. Yeah, I think it, it was, especially during COVID, as you say, the automation for now in our opt-out is going to really aid this as well, I think, because it, it kind of takes out a lot of the finicky doings with lecture recording. It can Hopefully, be tough yeah. to, you know, go Absolutely. in and remember to turn it on and yep. then know to turn it off and then it's logged in your system. But I think with the automation, it, it's better to have the succinct when you start talking, your lecture begins, and when you end talking, your lecture concludes. Because, yeah. you know, rather than the 10 minutes in between of students coming in and students yeah. going out, um, and also just, again, any, you know, supplementary videos that are uploaded, whether that be just you explaining a reading or you explaining um, another kind of aid to a lecture, and um, just having them really succinct and really, you know, snappy to the point, um, yeah to aid in students in the best way so that they're not sitting down for an hour and a half trying to take in yeah, so much absolutely. info. And we do a lot of training with staff as well uh, and with our colleagues in audiovisual media services around how to edit videos in, can in, yeah. in Canvas. So you know you'll often get the bit in the middle that's staff member talking to a student and you don't want that in the video. Exactly, well, it's easy yeah. to edit that out and we can show you how to do that. So Brilliant. we have the tools, it's just a case of using it. So it's great to hear that recording lectures uh, as study aids is, is an important part of, of, the, of what students want from us. Very good. So Ali, the last thing that we said back in October 2021 was around communications and how important it was to communicate with students. Now we recommend to staff that they have a communications policy in place and yeah. everyone thinks, oh God, that's really complicated now, what's a <laughs> communications policy? But I suppose we, all we mean really is, and people do it all the time informally, all we really mean is that you know, you're, you've clear communication with students about yeah. how you're going to communicate with them. So is that something you've come across? Do students talk to you about communications being important? Definitely. I think it's something as small as, you know, a timetable, you know, having timetables be um, linked in. When are my seminars starting? When are my tutorials? Yep. You know, th those are points that might be later in the year. Yep. But having that clear, clear communication between the staff and the student would really limit, you know, a lot of the kind of influx of queries surrounding that as well. Absolutely. Um, I think having that communication policy, it is something that benefits both parties. The student is clearly informed and also it lessens the kind of query workload that the staff would take on. Um, I think as well having, um, again, the digital education tools such as Canvas and having Canvas notifications are really, really important. Um, it's something that can just as easily, by clicking a button, a student can know when they have their assignments due, when they have um, a test, when they have something else. So having that there as well can really help both parties. Again, yep. the student is well informed and the staff member doesn't have this flurry of when's my assignment and yeah. how do I do this? And I think, yes, yeah, students having the student app and actually seeing their notifications pop up. Exactly, yeah. And Canvas are just releasing actually on the 21st of October a new feature in, in uh, a calendar where you can set up recurring meetings in the same way you can do it in Outlook and, and, and Teams. So that should make things uh, a bit easier for, yeah. for academic staff around it. I think one thing that's really important that, that came up for us as well was office hours. So um, I, I think it's really important, isn't it, to, to tell students when they can get in touch with you and when they can't. Definitely. And again, it's, it's, it's trying to find out what's best for both, you know. Yeah. Um, I think if a staff member has office hours or if they don't and they wanted to create them, you know, work best with their schedule, um, then a student knows that they'll block out that hour to sit down and um, kind of connect meaningfully with that staff member rather than kind of passing them on their way to a coffee yeah, or, yeah, yeah. you know, and I think as well, having that for the staff member will kind of kind of give some stability in their day as well. It can be tough when you're running from lecture to lecture. If you know you have those two hours blocked out, it can yeah. be really fulfilling as well to know you've you've had that time. That's well, a very good point, actually. We're all busy, aren't we? Like yeah, staff definitely. and students are all going from one thing to another yeah. during the day. So Ali, listen, no conversation really today could be complete without us talking about artificial intelligence. It's everyone's talking about it. Yeah. What is your view on the use of artificial intelligence in UCC and what's the impact it's going to have for students? And, and, and what would you say to staff who are a little bit worried maybe about the... Uh, you know, the, the development and the growth of artificial intelligence. Yeah, and look, it's completely natural to be worried. You know, it is a huge change and change is scary. Change is daunting, you know. Um, as we were only saying, it's like the internet. When the internet came out, everyone Absolutely, was yeah. probably like, oh my goodness, what is this? It's going to take over. Yeah. But I think it's how we responsibly use it is the main thing. And um, it's going to be used. It's going to be here. It's going to develop with the data that it's given. So we might as well try and adapt it to suit our needs. Um, I think what I'd say to staff is trying to adapt our assessment practices to kind of include it rather mm -hmm. than having no control over how students use it. That's the best thing, you know, kind of rather than worrying about how we use it, it's 
kind of controlling it in the ways we want is yeah. the most important part. Um, I think also knowing that it can be helpful in certain cases for students, you know, Very true, yeah. um, obviously not in the ways we, we don't want it to be used in, in replacement, but um, even like aiding students in um, how to use Excel, that can be a brilliant way for it to be Absolutely. provided and, you know, small tasks that, that can be um, kind of succinct for students in that way and then also in the assessment practices if it's utilised in that manner it kind of would engage students more as well because it's utilising the yeah. progressions in our generation. Very true and I think um, CERTLS, so a sister organisation of ours, the Centre for Integration Research, Teaching and Learning, um, have a new webpage on assessment in the age of AI yeah. so that's good guidance for staff and I think back at the end of semester two in, uh, in the last academic year they ran a uh, uh, a showcase session where a bunch of academic staff came in and showed examples of how they right. integrated AI. I think it's really important for students as well, and I know uh, Loretta Goff is working in the, student, yeah. in the skill centre. I think next week, um, next week when we're recording this, um, <laughs> they're going to be launching some academic integrity content yes. on the success zone course for students. So, so there's no reason why students shouldn't be well informed of what the issues are around artificial intelligence. And for staff, look, maybe talk to us and we'll, uh, we'll, we can give you some guidance maybe on how to use it as well. So Ali, listen, thank you very much um, for your time today. Really appreciate you coming in to talk to us. Um, is there any final tips, any final advice you want to give staff before we go? Um, I suppose, I think just, just knowing that, that you're supported in a fantastic community. UCC is a community. There's, there's so many fantastic departments to help you. And Centre for Digital Education, don't feel overwhelmed with any of these absolutely. points we discussed. Um, there's We're here always to talk, somebody, yeah. Exactly, absolutely, yeah. there's always somebody to come talk to and help. Um, and myself, if there's anything I can do to support staff in the future, um, I'm always around as well, only an email or a phone call. Fantastic. Um, and thank you so much for having me as well. It was no, it's been brilliant, brilliant. talk to you. Listen, the best of luck this year. You, um, if you full year ahead of you as the, as the education officer. It's a, it's a great place to work and we've had great um, uh, success working with education officers in the past and I'm sure we will over the next year as well. So thank you very much, Ali, thank and so the much. best of luck during the year.